Welcome to the web tutorial, the NHATS Late Life Disability Framework. First, let's go over what you can expect to learn. In this video, we will cover a brief history of concepts and language of late life disability, the NHATS Late Life Disability Framework, mapping concepts into measures in NHATS, and tips for using the NHATS disability measures. Let's start with a brief history of concepts and language of late life disability. In the 19th century, a medical model was the dominant lens through which disability was understood. This model viewed disability as a characteristic of an individual, resulting primarily from disease or trauma. Medical management was aimed at curing the disease in order for the individual to overcome disability. By the 20th century, a social model of disability emerged, where disability was perceived as a social problem attributed to barriers that excluded individuals from participation. Policies emerged to attempt to remove these barriers, for example, by making buildings accessible. Since that time, models of disability have attempted to incorporate both medical and social perspectives. The Institute of Medicine, or IOM, proposed a model, for example, sometimes referred to as the NAGI model of disablement. This model dominated most of the research studies that began in the 1980s and 1990s in the U.S. The model posited that Pathology and impairment at the organ level can lead to person-level functional limitations or difficulty with basic movements like walking, bending, and reaching, which may in turn lead to disability, often defined as difficulty or inability to carry out daily activities necessary to live independently. Although not shown, the IOM framework also recognizes that aspects of the environment determine whether functional limitations result in disability. Two common measures of late life disability developed in the 1960s and 1970s are the CATS Activities of Daily Living, or ADLs, and Lawton's Instrumental Activities of Daily Living, or IADLs. In the early 2000s, the World Health Organization, or WHO, proposed the International Classification of Functioning, Disability, and Health, or ICF. In this framework, disability is an umbrella term for impairments, activity limitations, and participation restrictions. Although not shown, the ICF framework also recognizes the role of health conditions and contextual factors on progression through this main pathway. The two frameworks have some key elements in common. Functional limitations and disability in the IOM framework map into activity limitations in the WHO ICF. The WHO ICF has positive analogs to each of the phases that fall under the umbrella term functioning. NHATS has adopted a conceptual framework for studying disability that blends language and concepts from existing models. Much of the language used in the NHATS framework is from the WHO ICF. For instance, NHATS uses the term disability as an umbrella term rather than as a final outcome in the disablement process. Let's take a look at the NHATS disability framework. The main pathway of the NHATS framework is similar to both the IOM and WHO ICF frameworks. Health conditions may lead to impairments in body functions and structures, which affect the ability to carry out essential self-care and household activities. However, the NHATS framework extends existing approaches in several key respects. First, the framework underscores the distinction between capacity of individuals to carry out activities and complex tasks and accommodations that individuals make to enhance their capacity. In this approach, capacity is defined as an individual's physiological, cognitive, and sensory capabilities to carry out tasks that form the building blocks of activities. Accommodations capture behavioral responses to changes in capacity. In essence, how activities are carried out and may include using assistive technology, changing the environment in which an activity is performed, changing the demands of the activity, reducing the frequency of an activity, and receipt of assistance from another person. Second, the framework makes a distinction between the ability to carry out by oneself essential activities, including mobility and self-care activities and household-related activities, and the extent of participation in valued activities. Third, the framework is explicit that a person's environment, broadly defined to include physical, social, technological, and service-related aspects influences the entire process. Next, let's take a look at how the concepts in NHATS map into measures. 
Tin Hats has re-engineered the traditional measures of late-life disability to support research with the NHATS disability framework. New measures were developed and tested to distinguish accommodations from limitations, measure participation in valued activities, and more fully measure the physical, social, technological, and service environments in which older adults live. In doing so, NHATS adopted a number of best practices for measurement, including offering respondents a recent time frame, not asking respondents to report about hypothetical behaviors, for instance, difficulty without help or special equipment, and referring to accommodations by name instead of as special. For health conditions, measures include a series of items that ask, has a doctor ever told you? Diagnoses are also available through linkages to Medicare claims. Measures of impairments in body functions and structures include problems with breathing, upper and lower body strength or movement, balance and coordination, and chewing, swallowing, and speaking. Measures of physical capacity include the self-reported ability to carry out basic body movements and performance-based measures of mobility, grip strength, and peak airflow. Sensory capacity measures include items about vision and hearing. And cognitive capacity measures include self or proxy reported items and activities to measure memory, orientation, and executive function. For accommodations, measures include behavior changes, use of assistive devices, or environmental modifications, and receipt of help. For household activities, rather than help, the wording is someone did the activity with you or for you, and the reason for help is assessed, such as health or functioning or other reasons. For ability to carry out essential activities, measures assess difficulty doing the activity by oneself with accommodations if used. Activities include mobility, self-care, and household activities, as well as medical care activities. Participation measures include whether the individual participated in the last month in working, volunteering, providing care or social activities, the extent to which the activity is valued, and whether health or functioning limited participation. NHATS also has detailed measures of the older adults' environment, including their physical, social, service, and technological environments. Measures of the physical environment include housing type, for instance, multi-unit building, home features, for instance, floors or stairs, home modifications, for instance, grab bars, and observations by the interviewer. Measures of the social environment include household members, items about living children, including both biological and step, siblings, the social network, and community cohesion. For those in residential care, and since 2015 in retirement communities, the service environment is captured through questions about availability and the use of services from the place. Finally, measures of the technological environment include use of the internet and daily activities and electronic forms of communication such as email and texting. Here we offer users a few tips on how to use the NHATS disability measures. Terms like ADLs and IADLs are commonly used in research, but because measures vary so widely from study to study, their meaning is unclear. That is, the reader is not able to tell if the measures assess difficulty and under what circumstances, or help, or device use, and what types of activities are included. For clarity, we recommend adopting NHATS language in your research with NHATS. That is, label these measures according to the type of measure, type of activity, and, for household activities, the reason for help. For instance, an outcome might be help with mobility or self-care activities, difficulty by oneself or always received help with mobility activities, or help with household activities for health and functioning reasons. When constructing variables to study disability, we recommend you pay careful attention to skip patterns. The skips are designed to route respondents through a tailored interview that will make sense for their particular situation. Note that most sequences start with how activities are carried out, that is with devices or help, and follow up with questions about difficulty by oneself are only asked if a respondent performed the activity by themselves in the last month. Finally, consider using derived variables provided by NHATS. Users are provided with a set for each mobility, self-care, and household activity. Here we show three derived variables for outdoor mobility. The first captures whether the respondent did the activity by themselves 
and if so, the difficulty level. The second captures the use of devices, and the third, the receipt of help. This tutorial was produced by Vicki Friedman, Sarah Patterson, and Men Yao Hu with funding from the National Institute on Aging. This ends the NHATS Late Life Disability Framework web tutorial. Comments and questions may be sent to nhatsdata at westat.com.